Hello and welcome to Hobby Vlog number 132. It's been a good week, been a busy week. I've got a few couple of new projects started and pretty much finished to a happiness. Uh, right now, as I talk, the latest pre-order from Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game we went live yesterday. Um, and so this week I built the Dulgorda Ruin set, uh, which is part of that pre-order. Um, they released it quite a long time ago, but this time around they're releasing it in a batch of a pack of six which is a lot of money, but they're pretty cool kits and you can see what I think, because that's gonna be part of this vlog. There's a few other bits and pieces. Uh, it's been a really fun week. I've managed to play a game with Angela, which was brilliant. Um, and yesterday, Rosie asked to play with Model Railway, which was awesome because I'd cleaned the tracks ready and prepared to play with it. So that was really cool that she asked. So yeah, been an all round good week. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. I really hope that everyone's doing well out there. And uh, yeah, I will see you again at the end. Well, there it is. <laughs> Done. And that, that was not easy. I almost wish that I'd filmed before I sealed this up uh, because yeah, I had to take a picture of in the process. I'll try and remember to uh, put that on screen. But yeah, that was hard work. Um, I think maybe I should have been using the online manual. I think that probably would have helped uh, because you can zoom in on the pictures, but certainly the printed manual, if we uh, just turn a page and zoom in on that, that's what we're trying to work with. And uh, yeah, not the easiest thing in the world. However, it now says I can eat another 15% of the bears, which is another six. So I'm gonna grab them out and enjoy those. This is now going to need to do the next chapter, which is the final one, which is the pre-flight checks. So um, yeah, I'm not sure I'm gonna do that now. I want to get this um, inside its box. So I've got a bit, uh, a bit of, I've got stuff I want to do in the workshop that I've not been doing while I've been building this because of the dust. So I need to put that inside its box, which is its container, which is over there. Um, and then I can do my other chores that I've got to do to do some cutting and what have you. And then I will do the, uh, the pre-flight checks and bring you along for that, which is adjusting the super pinder, whatever that is. Super ginger pinder adjustment part one, part two, and part three. And then it's gonna be first print time. So uh, very close to assembling. I'll probably put the assembly video up and then once I finish this, uh, once I've got a print going, then I'll probably do that as a separate um, collection of clips. I hope this has helped anyone that's building this. Um, if I can put this together, well, I don't know if it works, obviously. <laughs> um, but if I've been able to put this together so far, then anyone can. And if it works, then it proves that anyone can do this because this really is out of my wheelhouse and very, very nerve inducing for me. But I'm pleased to see it built. Um, here's hoping it works. And let's get this out of the, into, into a dust safe environment. Um, and then I will do the, uh, the pre-flight checks at some point soon. What we have here on my incredibly messy, dirty workbench is all of the Dumlock Flame Seekers from Artisans Guild. Now I bought and printed these ages ago and they've just been sat in a box. Here is the box they've been sat in. And uh, the challenge this month for the uh, Paint All The Minis Discord was to paint a um, paint some stuff in a style of a football team, so with a football team's colours. I'm not really big into sport; it's not really my thing, um, and so I wasn't going to do it. But uh, yeah, I've kind of just got inspired, and I'm going to try to paint all of this <laughs> because I'm an idiot. Uh, but also because I'm going to do this in cl claret um, and blue, uh, which is the colours for Aston Villa Football Club, which is my dad's club, and also uh, my sister loves them as well. Um, and so yes, it's going to be really nice to do that for, for, for him um, as a good memory. And I've wanted to paint these up for a long time because they're really awesome. I mean, they're awesome models. I'll try to remember to put a link uh, to them. But if you go onto My Mini Factory and search for Dumlock Flame Seekers, you'll find them. As I said, Artisan Guild is the people that have created these particular sculpts. So the first thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick all of these to tongue depressors um, and prime them. And then I'll be doing these in my 20 minute paintings through the next couple of weeks. Um, and I'll do regular updates with how I'm doing it. Um, I'm not going to only do them in two colours. Obviously, that would be crazy. But that's going to be the colours of the heraldry. So um, flags um, and other um, like clothing details and what have you will be done 
in the uh, Claret and Blue. So these are going to be the Aston Villa Dunlock Flame Seekers. So yeah, looking forward to this. I'll probably also do some kind of a display for them. Um, I'll paint them first and then see how they look and then probably do a, a scenic, scenic base at the very least um, to put them on and because why not? Um, so yeah, let's see. Let's see how well this works as an idea. And let's see if I get it done in time. I have absolutely no idea what my deadline is. Um, hopefully I've got at least a couple of weeks. I think it will take at least a couple of weeks to paint all this. So this coming Saturday, the multi-box of the Ruins Dolgoda is going off pre-order. And so what I thought I'd do is try to do a speed unboxing and build. I've got three packs I bought when they were originally released. So I'm trying to do a speed unpack and build of the Ruins of Dog Order. Now I'm not sure whether I'm going to do them onto um, a board. Um, I haven't decided on that yet. I need to look at them and I might build all three packs. I might just build one. Um, but as you can see, it's still in its shrink wrap. I haven't actually looked at it at all. I have no idea what it's like. So what I'm going to do is open this up and have a look and then work out whether I'm going to build all of them or whether I can get away with just building one. So uh, so we use plastic, you know how much I love it. Let's get this off. There we are. That's that waste out of the way. So let's have a look and see what's inside the box. Ooh, it's always nice opening a new box. One, particularly one with a kit that you've never seen before. So we've got some cool like twisted trees and some skeleton piles. And it's actually quite a heavy sprue that. <laughs> Here's the instructions. Read this first. Before assembling your model kit, please read through the instructions in this booklet carefully. A pair of plastic cutters is required to remove the plastic components in this kit from their frame. We advise using a mold line scraping tool to clean up the parts so, uh, and glue. So you can use um, either super glue or plastic glue. I normally end up using my uh, Tamiya Extra Thin when I'm building these uh, kits from um, from Games Workshop because it works very well um, but yeah I can tell you what the first thing the real first impression is just how weighty and solid those feel they're really good quality I might actually buy some more of these from this this current pre-order I might find out how much another box is but this time I think they're coming in a bulk pack anyway so what you get in each box enough muttering is three sprues as you can see um, we've got bits and pieces here we've got walls uh, more walls um, yeah uh, spiky things and the thing that it's going to be making is something that looks a bit like that so what I think I'm going to do I think I'm going to assemble this vanilla following the box following the instructions um, and uh, then once I've done that once, I've got two more boxes like this and I might do and I say I might add another pre-order, get some more. Um, but just building it vanilla I think is a good idea. So I'm going to sit down with the instructions, read them through as they suggest. And then I'll bring you along and we'll go through it step by step together I think. Because I don't think it's going to take long. Um, and then it'll be a, a case of, of having fun doing the build. But that's what we're going to end up with. Doesn't that look awesome? Right, so I've had a look through this and I think I know what I'm doing, but hey, we'll find out. I'm going to attempt to put together the lower floor assembly fully on camera um, and show you how I go about doing that. And then we'll move on down the instructions. I've got a bit of a headache after today, I'm not entirely sure why. So if I sound a bit t tired and quiet, it's because I am. What we've got is we have two A sprues and one B sprue. That's, uh, that's what we've got. So for this, I'm going to put one of the A sprues to one side because I don't think I need it immediately. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to get started. So we have snips, we have a um, hobby knife, and I also just out of reach over there is my mold line remover, which I may end up using. Um, but first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to get part A1, which I believe is this one. So we're going to snip that off. A2 two A14s and an A5. So let's get those snipped off now. So I've snipped A1 off and what we're going to do is use the hobby knife to remove the bits that didn't really snip off very well. So as you can see I just do that carefully 
holding it very close to the blade to help me get control. Try not to damage it, which I have a little bit there because I went a little bit nuts. You can also, if you're worried about cutting yourself, you can do it away from you. But I've always found that to be a little bit more difficult and a little bit less controlled, um, which is why I like to I like to go towards myself like that. I find it I find I have a little bit more control with a smaller movement, just like that. So I'll get these cleaned up, put it to one side, and then what I'll do is I will find parts A2, A14, and A5, get them snipped and cleaned, and then I'll turn the camera back on, because it's basically gonna be very much this, but repeated. There we are, that's all cleaned up. So now I'm gonna do the, ne the next parts. Um, we'll just point them out on the sprue. A2 is over here. A14 is, uh, da -da -da -da. A14 is, can't see it. Let's say 15, A14 is here so i am gonna to have to get an a14 i think off the other a sprue as well because there's an a14 here and there's an a15 here um, unless that's a typo i might have a quick read through and see if that's a typo see if there is call for an a15 anywhere else um, and if there isn't i will let you know so let's turn the camera off just get that checked and uh, get these snipped and cleaned i'll be back in a second Hi right then, so it wasn't a typo, I've had a look through, it definitely does say A14 and um, you use A13 elsewhere, so uh, an A15, so yeah, so I've, I've basically um, cut out two A14s, A1, A2 and A5. Well, so what we're going to do is going to glue them together. So they it works very much like this, it's actually, they actually go together as most of these Games Workshop kits, Citadel kits go together. Uh, just absolutely beautiful how they clip together. You can see it's it's almost a, a seamless join, even without any glue or just like just offering it up, which is wonderful. Um, so that's how that goes. And then that one goes like that. And then the this one which is A5 goes like that. So you can see it's almost seamless, absolutely fantastic. Really, really cool looking bit of kit. So um, what I'm gonna, actually, no, I think that's wrong. I think that's wrong. I think that, actually, no, maybe it's not wrong. Let me have a quick think about this because I'm looking at this and I think, yeah, maybe it goes like that. There we are. It comes, it's quite a sharp corner, I think. Um, do, do quite a sharp return. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to glue that together now. Um, I won't do all of the gluing on camera because it will be a bit repetitive. Um, but I'll show you how I'm going to do it. I have my uh, Tamiya Extra Thin in my awesome Ebma Hobbies Don't Knock It Over and Spill It jobby, which is such a good investment to make if you're doing this. Um, and how you're supposed to use this is actually hold it in place and then run the bead down the edge because it wicks inside and that way you get a good solid join. So there we are. I'm gonna do that and I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like when it's finished. Try and get that nice and, nice and sealed in like that. A little bit of pressure come along the back with the glue Hopefully getting that in shot, it's a bit difficult to keep this in shot. It's been too long since I've filmed actual assembly like this. <laughs> so I'm out of practice, but I think I've got it right now. 
So yeah, so I'm going to glue that just like that. So you run your bead down and it um, and it will then glue in place. So I'll get the rest of these assembled, um, show you what it looks like, and then move on to the next step. So I'll be back very shortly. All right, so I'm just assembling parts A2 and A5 together in it. It's not all that clear on the instructions, but I've got it worked out now, I think. So actually what happens is you end up with this, and I was muttering about it in the previous clip, you end up with this quite sharp angle. That's how they go together. And then on the back, the parts, a14 will slot on there so it's not actually all that obvious from the pictures took a bit of looking but that's how that works rather than this going in between a2 which is this piece and a5 which is this piece it actually goes on the back like that i believe so uh, yeah just in case you're struggling as well that's what i think you do so i'll get that glued together and then that ends up um like that and then I think hopefully I've got that right as well um, and then yeah we'll um, I'll have a look see hmm I'm not sure I might have made the mistake there this is not the greatest instructions I'm gonna be very honest about this it's a bit disappointing because that's how that looks like it goes. But then when you look at the picture, it's really not obvious. This is the piece. I think it should be going back. So that looks like I've actually glued that on wrong. Which is a shame because I've used this glue. So hopefully I can turn it around and I don't know. I'm going to have a bit more of a play. Uh, sorry for muttering and, and chuntering. This is what you get with me making things live. I'm not totally sure how this goes together. So I'm going to look at this again and make sure I'm not making a mistake. But it does look like what it should do is it should go back. So it looks like it should be joined like that, not like that. So it looks like it should be joined like that. So I'm going to have a bit of a play around, work out how that's done. And uh, yeah, then I'll... Um, then I'll get back to you. So uh, yeah, that's the next thing to do with this, but I'm happy with it. I've, I've done this right. <laughs> I've done this bit right. Um, now I need to work out how to join A1, A14 and A2 together. I will be back very shortly. You can see how well these gl this glues, there's only been a second or two, and that was quite hard to, to break apart. So that's the benefit of this, uh, of this cement. Of course, the problem is if you make a mistake, then it does dry so quick that you can have difficulty Difficulty making uh, doing it doing it right. So anyway, yeah, I'll, I'm gonna work that out. I'll bring it back in a short while when I've when I've got to the bottom of this little bit of instruction. This is only panel one A, by the way, so this is not starting off very well. Okay, I've worked it out. So that so this is part A two, and part A fourteen goes there behind it, like that, and then this piece. I had it a second ago. There we are slots in like that. So you end up, sorry that wasn't in focus, so you end up with kind of that arrangement for the uh, for the part. For a while there I was really struggling, I, that took me a lot of lot of figuring out. So I'm going to glue that together, finish that off and uh, yeah hopefully uh, hopefully get this uh, hopefully get this done right. Um, looks to me like that piece needs to go on there as well, which I've not yet glued on. So the other A14 needs to go on the back there. So I've got a little bit more gluing to do. Then that'll be panel 1A, <laughs> and then we'll move on to 1B. So panel 1A is done. Now for panel 1B. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna snip out A4, which is that one. And then it's gonna be onto the B sprue, and we need to get B11 and B7. So these are both B11s and B7 um, is, can't see it at the moment, I'll find it in a second. B7 is this one here, down the bottom. So I'll get those snipped out, cleaned up, and then bring you back for the assembly step. Happily, this step is slightly more obvious. So part B7, drops in there very nicely and then part B11 is used to connect these two parts which is A4 and your previously assembled panel 1A so that oh, 
tell you what, I'm not spoiling it everywhere. There we are. So that glues on there like this, and then it joins together to look like that. There we are. So a bit more easier to do um, panel 1B. So I'll get that glued in again and uh, bring you back for the next step very shortly. For this bit, I resorted to the grab of some super glue or a super glue gel. Um, it was just being a bit of a pain. <laughs> so there we are. So the next step is panel 1D. And I think this is where I'm going to have to finish tonight. It's taken me far longer to get this done than I hoped. And uh, so, yeah, I'm going to have to stop and go to bed. I'm tired. Uh, 1D, um, sorry, 1C even, not even 1D, 1C. 1C, you get part B2, which is that, I believe. Um, and part B13, uh, which I'll find in a second. B13, where are you? B13 is down here. There we are. Um, and also A11 and A4. Um, as so... Let's just uh, turn that the quarter around. So B13 and B2 is going to go here, and A4 and A11 is going to go here. So I'll get those cut out and uh, then bring you along to show you how they go and get them glued on, and then I'm going to go to bed. And I'm, I'm not completely done. I've got two more panels to do on the lower floor assembly. I was really hoping to get this all done tonight, but that's just not going to happen. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'll get those snipped out, get them glued on, and then um, show you what they look like. And here we have it uh, at the end of panel 1C. So the what I've stuck on is that bit, that bit, and this bit here. So this is B2, this is the second A4, and uh, yeah, I have made a mistake. <laughs> that needs to come off. Oops. You need to have these these panels here on the inside so I'm gonna to have to split that off and pull that off and that actually needs to go on that way around goodness me I am making lots of mistakes on this build probably not helped by the fact that I'm not very well but that's what it's gonna look like there so yeah just pay that pay attention to what to the fact that this is the inside and the uh, there's going to be a floor put on top of this, so you need to have these um, little lips, these little shelves on the inside. So I'll get that glued again now. <laughs> Thank goodness I spotted that. I was about to go to bed, and now I am going to go to bed once I've glued that together. Uh, but that's what it looks like when it's done, kind of right, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, what fun. All right, day two, uh, and I'm quite a way behind where I hope to be, but it is what it is. So what I'm going to do is panel 1D. 1D needs me to get A10, uh, two A10s, an A11 and an A7, um, and these are now starting to fill in these gaps behind the um, behind the the bit uh, because we've nearly finished basically. So we're looking at fi uh, filling in these gaps, um, and then also a B12 and a B6. So I'm going to find those on the sprue um, and cut them out and um, then glue them in um, and I will show you what that looks like when that's done. Okay, so I found them. A10 and A11 are here. So we need two of these A10s, one of these A11s. So that means the A10 from each sprue and not A11. Um, and then uh, the other one we need is A7, which I did find and now I've, I've lost again. <laughs> Um, it is a bit difficult to read the uh, sprue labels um, on this. You have to kind of keep moving at an angle, otherwise you can't really read it. So, um, so yeah, let me see if I can find that for you as well to point out where that is. That might help you. A7, here's A7. So the question is, um, A7 label is here, but does that mean it's this one or this one? <laughs> Because that says A8. Um, are we going to presume that A7, the, 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 that when you turn it around, A7 means this one, I think. That's what I'm going to presume. I'm going to guess. There's no arrow on it. It's not very helpful. So I think that's A, A7 with the spikes on it. And then that's A8 without the spikes on it. I think that looks right. So yeah, so there's A10, A11, and A7. And then um, B9 is... B6 and B9 is what we need. So there's 
B9 and there's B6 so they're down here B9 and B6 right get them cut out get them glued on and then we'll move on to panel 1E okay so now we're on to the final panel which is panel 1E you can see I've used a clamp here to just to help us hold it together so 1E requires you to get these two end pieces here so uh, that is A19 and A20 um, and then you want to have A9 which took me absolutely ages to find um, and now I've lost again <laughs> um, it's really hard to read the uh, read the read the numbers like I said there's A9 there it is um, and you also need B10 which is going to be over here um, and is do 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 this B10 no it's not this is a superb video video isn't it this is so good b10 is here there's b10 so uh, so yeah so i'm going to snip those off um b10 goes so if we turn this around let's take these clamps off don't need those anymore so b10 and a20 go at this end and a9 and a19 go at this end and then we're finished on the first page lower floor assembly finally so i get those snipped get those glued and then we'll move on to the next step, which I think is going to be a bit easier, which is a floor assembly. That should be pretty much easy to do looking at it. So, uh, yeah, cracking on. OK, so now we're going to do the floor assembly, which is panel 2A. And for that, you need to have this part from both A sprues. So A16 and A17 from both uh, sprues and A18 as well from both sprues, which is that one. So basically these three bits here you need to have from, from both sprues. So um, I'm going to clip them out and then I'll show you how they go together. Right, so I've clipped out and cleaned up all of the floor bits and uh, the instructions tell you basically to glue them into, into a single assembly. So you have kind of that shape and you have um, that shape and then once you've glued it together it says to drop it on top of your walls now I'm wondering whether it's going to be better and more efficient particularly this end to stick them in um, so glue that in place and then once that's down and in for example glue that in place you can see I'm having to move the walls a little bit because um, I haven't glued them together absolutely perfectly. Um, so I'm wondering whether that's going to be a better, more efficient way of doing it rather than try to assemble the floor and then stick the floor in place. But I'm not sure because you can see as well that that doesn't quite hold, its, um, hold itself. So it might be a good idea to glue that piece in and then stick the rest of it together. Fair enough but leave that bit separate and then once all this is glued and, and, is, and is flat, which I can do on a flat surface, then slot that in and glue that in place. Well, I think that's what I'm going to do. Stick that piece in, make the rest of it up, uh, get that to dry and then slot that down on top. But that's panels 2A and 3A. So I'll get that done, uh, try that gluing and let you know how it goes. So I've glued that in place and I've made the raft and that's going to work quite nicely. It's going to be a bit easier to fit I think. I think it would be really much more difficult if this was still if this was glued to there now and then we were trying to do this kind of bending and because I have to open the, wind, the walls a little bit so that it actually fits. You can see that if you don't bend the walls it doesn't fit. Um, so yeah so I think that was a wise decision. So I'm going to get that glued in place and um, that's now there. I'm not pushing it right down because I need to be able to lift it out to apply my glue. So I'll get that glued in place and then that is that stage done. Next up is stage 3B. Uh, we're going to get the next a, um, a sprue one, which is which is that one. The next a sprue one, the a sprue six, which is that one, um, and the a sprue thirteen, which is one that I'll probably find when I'm looking. But it's a another of these uprights. I'm going to glue those three together um, to make a straight wall like this, um, and uh, yeah, so I'll get those clipped out and glued as well. Um, and then bring you along once I've done that. So that's going to be panel 3B, and I'll bring you along for 3C. Okay, so I did panel 3B, but I actually found <clears throat> that it was easier and it added to something to steal a bit of a step from um, from the next panel, which was beef, which is 3C. 
Um, I've actually put B10 in, which is the uh, this front piece here. Uh, it made it easier for me to glue and clamp if I had the front and the back pieces on. It made it easier for me to keep the whole thing straight. So there's a, a little tip for you there. So what I'm now going to do is get A7, A12, two B14s and a B8. The two B14s go on this back corner here. Um, A7 goes here. Uh, A12 goes here and B8 goes on the back there. I'm going to get them clipped out, clean, cleaned up and snipped on, uh, glued on, and then we'll move on to 3D. So that's basically just the same as what we've been doing a lot, so I won't go into detail on that. But then we'll come to 3D, um, and that is going to be finishing the lower floor assembly, apparently, which is uh, which is quite exciting. Um, so, so yeah, so I'll get that done. Next step is nice and easy. You can see that I've clamped for the previous one just to make that a little bit more stable but the next step is a bit easy it's these two pieces here it's the stairs so b21 and b20 and uh, these are going to be stuck on here so you've got some steps going up they kind of got there so yeah i will uh i will get that cut out and glued and uh, bring you back to show what it looks like but uh, yeah it's gonna be pretty pretty simple and then the next thing that will happen is these will actually um, attach on to the this will actually attach on to the other base um, that we the other walls that we made earlier so I get these two uh, glued together stuck in place and then I'll bring you along for lower floor assembly confirmed which is panel 3e all right now I have the fun bit and trust me I've been trying to do this for a bit this is the fun bit of fitting these two together and it takes some force it is possible I did do it once I am going to need to uh, I'm going to need to clamp it in place while it dries, while the glue dries. But yeah, it was not the easiest thing in the world to get them to fit in. So I'm probably going to do it off camera, but I did just want to show that. Oh, there we are. There we are. Starting at that end and then push this end in. Uh, but that's what we're going to do next. So I'm going to glue that in place, make sure that all sits in nicely, sits snug on its little shelf. And then glue it, and that is three e done and the lower floor assembly completed so there we are next up we're going to look at the upper floor assembly i'll get this glued and clamped i've got these uh got these clamps which will be able to be used quite nicely to to hold it in place while it's drying so i'll get that glued and then we'll have a look at the next step so now we start on the upper floor assembly so we're going to take a2 which is that one B1, which is that one, and then a whole chunk of other bits and pieces, joining strips um, to make a straight wall. Now, the big difference here, um, um, other than the lower ones, is we're going to be taking these A22, sorry, not to A22 parts, um, which I had I had them in, in sight, and then I've lost them. There it is. So we're going to be taking these, and these get to be stuck on to cover up that little kind of like ledge, which was used to put the floor on for the lower level, but we're gonna fill that in with the A22 parts. So we're gonna have two A22s being used, I believe. Um, yeah, two A22s, both of which go on to cover up that, um, that, little, that little ledge. So I'm gonna get those snipped out and glued in, and uh, then I'll come back. This is panel 4A. I'll come back and show you what we're gonna do for 4B. Right, here we are. That's uh, panel 4A done. What we now do is we take A3 and we attach it on there. We also want to fill in this top bit here. And for that, we're going to use panel A21, which is up here on the sprue, on the A sprue. And then on the other end, we put A8, um, which is one of these ones. But yeah, can't see it off the top of my head because yeah it's hard to find them <laughs> um but yeah it's one of these one of these uprights it might even not be on that sprue anymore it might be on this sprue so i'll get that glued together that will then sit at a nice angle like this and that will be panel 4b and then we'll move on to the next step which is 4c so we'll get that glued together have a look at 4c and show you what that looks like when i get to that as well okay so there we are that's the result of uh panel 4b it's looking good. So next we're going to do 4C and 4D. I'm going to do them together. So 4C is panel A3, which is your one here with the with the window on it, um, and panel and A20, which is 
one of these, I believe. Um, yep, A20. Actually, one of these bigger ones. One of these big ones here. Um, and a couple of the kind of like joining strips, A10, B13, A11. And then 4D involves the um, B3. B3 is the, um, not that one. Pick up the wrong, pick up the wrong sprue. Is that one there. And then you want to fill in the back as we've done in the past. Um, and then there's another couple of the little joining things on that goes on there. So I'm gonna get those two built they're separate they're used later on in the uh, in the instructions and, and joined on um, one of them actually to this uh, particular shape uh, so i'll get those assembled um, and then bring them out for the next step when they're done but we're getting close now there's still a fair bit to go but we're not far off we're over halfway now which is which is nice all right so what we're going to do as i've said is i'm going to make it so that this um, sawmill that's the word for it can uh, be fitted in with my modular river sections, which uh, there were videos on my channel how I did that. Um, I did that as part of my uh, Battle Goes Middle Earth. So I've got my 5mm thick um, insulation here, which is perfect. Um, and what I'll do is basically I will mirror an entrance like this for the river and then narrow the, that down so that it goes underneath where the hole is here and then I'll do the same over there. So what will be able to happen is you'll be able to put this down and then, build, and then bring your river in and bring your river out and it will actually tie together nicely. This will probably, I will probably sit this up on, so you can see on, on, the, on this you've got the banks raised up. So what I'll do is I'll have this sitting up on the banks. So it will be over the river like that. And that then means that the water wheel will need to be a little bit uh, in, a little bit in her done to uh, to make it right. I might need to add a little bit more um, underneath it just to extend them in. I might be able to get away with it by doing some, some froth or what have you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the measuring out. I've got a blank for this, uh, which I made a template, which I've kept. So I'll get the template out, mark up where I want to cut, cut it out. And then uh, once I've done it marked up, I'll get them and I'm cutting. I'll bring you along and show you how I'm going to do that, how I'm going to build up the banks and make it so that this can uh, can sit on, on on the banks quite nicely. I'm, I'm probably going to have it on quite a large base. I think it's going to be quite large in the end because uh, I'm going to want to um, lead a path up to these steps, etc. Um, but yeah, so I'll get my template and get some drawing and then bring it back when I'm about to start cutting and doing some gluing. Well, here it is. Never ever throw things away. There's my river template which has as you can see the banks and how wide the river needs to be to uh, coincide and join up with the other uh, with the other ex uh, extensions so what i'm going to do is draw the line there and the line there and the line there and the line there so there we are that's where i have to have it so that this will match up as you can see we've got the bank um, not that great at that end. I've <laughs> uh, got the bank and then got the river here and a little bit of kind of like rocky uh, outcrop there. So with that done, what we can do is I'll start to actually uh, sketch in so that the river is going to have to, sorry, that's the river, that's the bank. I need the bank to come out. That was, I've already made a mistake. So I'm not gonna have this too close. I'm gonna have that about the middle and uh, the bank is going to have to do that and the bank is going to have to do that so it's going to have to widen the actual bank a bit like this and if i sit this if I roughly draw in outline around where i want this to be sitting which is here like that this will allow me to replace the template in the right place or replace the sawmill in the right place there we are important to know where the river where that uh, steps is there we are and then this is where the actual stream needs to go down between those so what i'm going to want to do basically is bring the stream in a little bit to that so that's where the stream's going to go. And then the bank is going to want to come around 
And like I say, I'm going to want to have it quite wide out here, like so. And then what I'm going to have to do is with the template again at the top, I'll do the same marks. And then I'll be able to join those up and I've got my base and I can then cut that out carefully and get stuck into to doing the rest of the of the banks. So again, this is going to be coming in from underneath from there and just make sure that matches up nicely. It's going to need to come in like that. So that's where the river is going to be. Um, like so, that's where the building sits. So what I'm going to want to do here now is cut out just a bit wider than that line um, and then I can slope it in. And then I'm going to need to look to build these, these banks up, leaving this section here low and then I can, um, then I can set the building on once I've painted the actual river section. So it's not going to take too long. It's quite a simple process, but I'll bring you along and show you it. So let me get that done. Let me uh, get this all cut out now. I'll just use a sharp knife. Just uh, the Citadel knife is perfect. Just show you how I do that. So just on a on an angle, you can come along and you don't have to be 100% accurate. As long as you're 100% accurate when you hit the edge, you can see that we're that I'm able to get a nice kind of beveled edge. So I'll do that all the way around. When I've done that, I'll bring you back for the next step. All right, so I think I did that right. I'm gonna find out, I suppose. I've ended up with this open space here and I'm pretty sure it's correct, but <laughs> we will see, hopefully. So now to panel 4E. And panel 4E is taking this particular spiky monstrosity here um, and combining it with the doorway this one and a couple of other bits and pieces like flat panels and whatever to fill in the shelf um, and putting that together and then we're going to look at 4F which takes um, that there combines it with the other doorway which is on the other sprue and another bunch of panels and spiky bits to um, and then those two 4F 4E are glued together with 4D. So I'm going to do these panels. Uh, as I say, that's, that's what we're pulling out. We're pulling out this spiky bit here, a couple of doorways, a couple of panels like that, glue them all together. And then when I come to panel 4G, which is combining them together, then I'll turn the camera back on. I don't want to get too samey on this. Um, I think we're pretty close to the end now. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to uh, skip over a couple of panels of videoing. But yeah, I'll make these two panels up and then bring you back when I get to combining them. Okay, so I found I had made a mistake. Where I said I wasn't totally sure um, that I'd done it right, um, I'm pretty sure I've done it completely wrong um, on this piece here. So what I'm doing right now is just removing all of the attachments. I've been able to do that just with um, a sharp knife with my um, with, with, with my hobby knife. Um, what I should have had is on the one end, I should have had A15 which is this half piece here, this small slim piece here. Um, and what that then does is it tucks in like that and fills in that gap there. As you can see, there's that little gap there. So that's how that works. However, um, I think everything else I pretty much I'm okay with. Um, I'm not totally sure about whether I've done this end of this piece right or not. So I'm gonna have another look again, dig deep into it again, and make sure I've not made a stupid mistake. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm not totally sure whether I have or not. I can't really tell. It's a, the, 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 one of the problems I'm having with this is uh, everything fits into everything else. So dry fitting isn't really going to help um, before my favourite commenter says that. Um, but the pictures are quite dark and they're not very clear. So it's quite hard to actually tell whether you've got the right piece, uh, particularly because 
the labeling on the sprue is just all over the place. You've got all sorts of numbers all over the place and they don't actually, some of them they've put arrows on. So you can see here, you've got that says B11 and it's got an arrow on either side of it. So you know that these two are B11, these two are B12. Um, so there are some places where they've bothered to put arrows on, but quite a lot of them they haven't and they really should have put arrows on everything. So this is quite hard. <laughs> So yeah, so what I might end up doing is removing both of these on the end of this because I can always add them on at another time but removing them once it's all glued together in a big piece is going to be harder. So um, I was able to remove that without any real issue. Let me see if I can actually remove this now while I'm on camera. Um, probably removed it more by luck than judgement to be honest. Um, yeah, so I'm going to try and take these off because I'm not totally sure I've got them right um, and I can always re-glue them back on as long as they don't actually damage the, the piece. But having said that, a little rambly bit of whinging, what I'm going to do now is combine these two like that so they go into like a little kind of promontory headland type thing and that works quite nicely. So that's going to glue like that. And then once I've uh, resolved this, that's going to stick on like that and do another little angle so we end up with this shape. So I'll glue that all together and then I will get you to the next step. But yeah, a bit frustrating that, a bit difficult at times to understand where the pieces go. Um, but hey, something's easy, something's worth doing, it doesn't have to be easy. That's what I was trying to say. Right, so I think I've managed to undo all the mistakes I made. I'd actually made a mistake on this piece as well, which was the panel from um, 4C. Uh, uh, I'd put the wrong end on there, and that's probably what led me to do lots of other mistakes. So um, yeah, my advice on this is be really careful, look ahead, try to uh, plan ahead a little bit better. I was looking ahead all the time and trying to work out because I was so confused on the numberings. But you can see, um, unfortunately, I've managed to break one of the pieces. This was the one that was on the end of that one. Um, it will be fine, I'll be able to fix it. It's not the end of the world. Um, thank goodness I was, I've gone to using super glue and not, um, and, and, and gone away from using the, uh, the cement because otherwise there's no way I would have been able to fix this. Um, the, other, the other side is of course that what I've decided to do is take a load of things off and then only add them on right at the end or when I really, really need to so that I can make sure that I've got everything in the right place. But I have now got quite a few of these larger pieces which I think is what I need to go on and cover up some of the gaps. But I'll, 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 um, I'll, I'll do that right at the end of the build. So where we're at now is we're at step 4H. So I've got the piece that I've just made, um, which is this funky shaped bit here. And I, that is going to glue on to the front of that bit, which is the bit we made in panel 4B. And then the bit that we made in panel 4C, which is this, which I've just fixed, is going to go and slot on there and you can see that it's actually now looking right. So I'm going to get that glued together. Once that's glued together that goes onto the top of the piece that I made before. If I just bring that in, there we are, and um, I believe that sits on like this. So you can see that it kind of goes on nicely on the top there. So I'm going to get all that glued on and leave that to be set and then we're on to the final parts which is the bits on the top um, and when I come to do that then I'll be filling in these you can see I've got some gaps and I've got some bits where there's no um, where uh, particularly here I need to put something there and I think that's the one that I've just hacked off <laughs> I think that's going to go in there um, but I'm going to need to do some cleaning up because there's bits of super glue still stuck inside it and what have you so um, so the first thing I'm going to do right now enough nattering is stick that on there and that on there and let that set and then what I'll do is I'll bring you back for the next bit which will be tidying up the gaps, showing where I made the mistakes, getting that all cleaned up and gluing it onto the, uh, the ground floor. So um, yeah I think I'm finally going to do this right uh, but this has been far more complicated than need be. Oh the builders are working, apologies for the noise. Uh, far more complicated than need be if the labels on the sprues were better and the drawings were bigger like if this was A4 but are not shrunk down so tiny, then maybe I wouldn't have uh, struggled so hard. But yeah, yeah. Be careful when you're doing this build. It's not as easy as it looks. All right, so I think I've managed to save this. I've glued all that together. 
and now where I'm at is looking at fitting all of the other pieces on to uh, fill in the gaps um, and this is where the benefit of them all being kind of like um, be, being able to be interswappable uh, is going to make it easier so I have a piece over here which is going to slot on nicely there so I'll get that glued in place that's upside down but yeah slot in nicely there so I'll go there and then I've got this one here will go in there nicely there this piece here goes here and I've still got one on the sprue which I've not used which will actually fit in behind there to complete that and then last but not least I have this one here which I'm going to put on the back because this is the one that I damaged and that is going to be able to go on the back and fill that gap so I'll get those all glued in place um, and then what I'll do like I've said before is it actually um, fits on like this there we are get it get it oriented correctly so once i've fitted those i will glue it on like this um, stick it on on top glue that all down and then i'll bring you along for the oh you can't see that sorry like that <laughs> there we are that's better um, yeah so i'll stick it on like that and then what i'll do is i'll come to the final steps which is doing the bits that are going to go on the top here so a um, little bit of gluing to do and then i'll be back very shortly to uh, do the final steps and then we're going to look at painting it well there we are all glued together and uh, clamped just to hold it in place and what i'm now going to do is work on the next steps which is the bottom here so we're going to be making this kind of like low um, wall which is what goes right on top of everything over here so uh, we're using uh, these parts that you can see here so these low walls and these low angle bits and these low joining strips so I'm going to get stuck into that now. I think also we're going to get to use that. So I'm going to get stuck into that now, get them stuck together, get them glued, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Um, but I think we really are now getting towards the end. So I'll get that done and bring you back when I have them assembled. Well, that's quite easy to assemble. I was just watching some uh, YouTube videos and putting it together and I didn't make any mistakes. So we did just go to show that maybe I just wasn't paying enough attention when I made the, mis when I made the mistakes before. So that sits on top like that, as you can see. So what I'm gonna do now is get that glued in place, clamp it, and then go and do some painting for a bit, do my 22 minutes. And then when I come back, I'm gonna finish up, put the last few bits on, which are just some uh, uh, cap stones, and then the uh, vines, and then we're done. So I'll get that glued on and clamped, and bring it back, show you what it looks like when it's finished. But yeah, pretty pretty cool, pretty cool looking bit of kit. and. Uh, yeah, very happy to have assembled this. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the other two kits, uh, whether I'm going to try and combine them or make some custom. I might do it, to be honest. Yesterday I had some deliveries, and I'm going to start off with the most awesome one first. Uh, this is the Paint All the Miniatures um, Anniversary Exchange. Um, and I'm, I'm tingling now. I've just read the letter that came with it, and I'm just so touched. I'm so blown away. Um, and I really wanted to... Uh, to thank Casey, um, who sent me an absolutely wonderful letter. Really lovely, I'm so touched, so thank you so much for that. That means a hell of a lot to me. Um, yeah, so I'm not gonna read it out, um, but yeah, well, what a thing. So he's uh, sent a package here, it's come all the way from America. And uh, as you can see, I've not actually looked at this, I've not opened it at all, I've just, Open the box, seen what it was, and got the camera out. So, uh, oh wow. Look at that. Look at that. That is absolutely wonderful. <laughs> so there is a little bit I'm gonna read then. So this is a print from uh, Real Train Neil from Real Train Hubbies, good uh, friend of the channel. Um, he did a Kickstarter, which I did back, and I do have the um, I do have these files, but I haven't printed any yet. But this is printed from that Kickstarter. Uh, the theme for the challenge was Second Breakfast, as you've seen, because um, I did the. Uh... Actually, no, I didn't put it on the channel, did I? I will be. I will put something on the channel about what I made as well. Um, it hasn't yet arrived at who I sent it to, but that was the theme, Second Breakfast, and of course, as you can see, we have a Hobbit hole with a hobbit pondering what to have for his second breakfast and that is absolutely stunning and I can tell you what 
Casey, you say you hope you get Angela's and Rosie's um, seal of approval. I will tell you right now that you will get their seal of approval. And um, that is beautiful. Really lovely piece. I will get some pictures and uh, put them up after this clip. Don't normally do that on the vlog, but I will do because that deserves some good photography to show off all the details. A lovely flat. I mean, I'm just running away. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Thank you so much. Wonderful, what a thing. And thank you to Paint with Minis, Dan and the rest, who have put together such a great community. And this is one of the outputs, is sharing joy and inspiration. And what a wonderful thing. I'm touched. Lovely letter. Superb, superb build. And yeah, I'm going to stop being effusive now because I'm going to embarrass myself. But honestly, that's, that's just blown me away. Wonderful, what a thing. <laughs>
Anyway, so we've got a starter set. Uh, I will be uh, trying to have a game of this with Angelo. We've been talking about it. We finally finished our uh, game that we've been playing for the last two months yesterday, so we're going to pick up a new one. So maybe this will be it, if I can get it painted up and assembled and what have you. Um, but yeah, um, waited a long time for this. Bit underwhelmed, actually, that it doesn't have a, a rule book in it. I really thought it did. Never mind. Okay, so I've just actually read this, and it says... It does say they include the Green Hood Edition rules and the printable... But that's the key, printable. So there's a zip file online and you have to print things, <laughs> which is okay, I suppose. I will go and do that now because I have got my color, duplex color printer, so uh, I can print it on two sides and, um, and also reduce this, the, the size on the page if need be to save, um, save paper. Um, I suppose it saves a bit of cost for them um, and they don't have to post paper to me, um, but still I would have rather had a nice printed out. I will get that printed and downloaded, uh, downloaded and then printed, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, so I've stuck together the little kind of statue thing and finished gluing this together. And so I'm going to do a little bit of a uh, analysis of, uh, of what I think um, before I move on to the next steps of this build. Um, I've also put the trees on the back, as you can see. I've not stuck the skulls in place that are dangling down, because I want to do those and glue them on separately, I think. Uh, I'll do them, I'll paint them separately. Uh, so there's a couple of bits and pieces still on the sprue, but, uh, but yeah, mainly I've finished it. So what are my thoughts on this? It's a really nice kit, it looks great. However, some of the issues I've got, I've also already mentioned, so the instructions are not great, so it's very difficult to read. The sprues are not well labelled, very difficult to understand what's right and wrong, easy to make mistakes. Uh, but more than that, <clears throat> you can see here it's a bit misaligned, which I'm going to show you how to resolve that, it's not a problem, it's not going to be an issue when I've finished. But the reason that's misaligned is that this is gaping, and the reason that's gaping is that the sprues are very difficult to clean up, because they're very, they're too big. Um, so the actual the the joins from the sprue to the to the piece is just humongous, and so you have loads and loads of um, of plastic to try to clean clean up, and then it becomes very difficult to avoid damaging the actual part. So I'm not sure why they've done that. Um, it's a bit annoying, and it was very hard while I was while I was working on it. I was aware that it was going to be a problem, um, and it's turned out to be more of a problem than I realised because even though when I set this together, I did have it all lined up, it just popped out and it warped a bit, and uh, now I'm going to have to recover these gaps. But that's fine. That gap I can fix using some filler, uh, but I'm going to show you how to do this without filler because not everyone has filler so you might want to know how to fix these sorts of things if you don't have filler and I'll show you that in another video. Um, so yeah but, but apart from those things, so not very good instructions, the actual result is great. I mean it looks good and you expect that from Games Workshop because they're very good at what they do. Uh, it's just a shame that they didn't really uh, do, the, uh, do the instructions and maybe the sprues were a little bit overwhelming, a bit big, a bit heavy. Uh, so yeah, glad to have built it. This there is going on pre-order as this video goes live on my vlog this is going on pre-order yesterday uh, so um, I'm not going to buy any more I was having an iring but I think it's a packs of six only it's 250 pounds British pounds which is a lot of money and I don't need six I've got three that's enough so I'm not going to bother ordering any more um, but you could do a full table with that which isn't too bad I suppose if uh, if that's what you want to do a full table uh, get a pack of six um, but for me, I'm not going to bother. Um, so yeah, pretty good. Happy I got it done. Not sure what I'll do with the other two. I will bring you along when I come, probably show you what they look like. I'm almost certainly going to make something up as I go along because now I've seen the sprue, I can kind of work out what I can do and not do. Um, yeah, there we are, that's my thoughts. Well, then all of my shelves are done. And honestly, I'm absolutely so pleased. I mean, it's massively overwhelming in one sense. I'm looking at that thinking, how many books do I need to make? <laughs> but on another hand, it's absolutely overwhelming. And I'm thinking, that just looks perfect. I'm so pleased. So pleased with how it's worked out. My technique seems to be working fine. Uh, I've come up with all sorts of awesome shelves. Loads of them, racks and racks and racks. And it really serves to kind of put the, uh, the, the, the view below of... Uh, so we have our little table here with our little vignette. Um, we're going to have our dog sat in front of the fire, a chair here, 
with the table and books next to it and then maybe over here we'll have the uh, have that uh, globe but yeah I mean it just serves to to put everything into perspective it's this is an overwhelming room of books and knowledge and uh, arcane stuff and I'm really pleased so the next step is uh, going to be start to start to paint. I'm going to have to do more than one thing at once now. I'm going to start to to rack this up and move this for, for a bit faster. So the next step on the on the uh, shelves is to paint them. So I don't normally, but I'm going to use a spray paint for this because it's uh, going to be a pain to do this um, with um, normal paints, mainly because it'll probably warp them quite badly. And I also want to start working on the floor and I've been having lots and lots of thoughts about that. Not quite nailed it down, but I think I know what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go, I'm going to just get some dark brown paint and spray paint all of these. I'm going to have to mask off my foam, which is here and here, which I'm not yet ready to, um, I'm not yet ready to kind of uh, work on those in detail. Um, the only bits that I've not actually put any bookshelves on is down the sides of the door and down the sides of the fireplace so I might add maybe on the door I might add some more I think around the fireplace I won't I think I'm going to do something even more awesome there uh, which I'm still working out in my head so I might actually need to do a few more shelves <laughs> having said I'm done just over here in the uh, by the by the door at the moment this is only held up using some uh, using some kind of right angle things wedging it in it's not glued or anything i just wanted to put it in place but yeah this looks wicked i'm so pleased i'm gonna go and spray paint them i'll bring you back when i come to the next step one thing you may not know is angela is an artist she uh, paints in pastels not uh, normally with traditional paints so she has done some of that but mostly pastels she's very very good and i'm not just saying that she really is very good uh, and i was uh, trolling through my mini, uh, my, uh, my mini factory um, and found this fantastic sculpt. Now, I've doubled the size of it. This was the size that it would should have been. Um, and I've doubled the size. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint this up as a little present for her. Now, I, paint, I printed it in both sizes because I'm not sure how well it would scale up. And it has scaled up fine. I did have a few issues with uh, some supports uh, clashing. I didn't do it very well. It's the first time I printed for quite a long time, but it does look absolutely brilliant when it's when it's set up, and I'm sure that she'll really appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, the one issue is is that the print um, of the actual canvas backing didn't really turn out very well. So I don't know whether I'm going to keep the base. As you can see, it's kind of a bit cluttered. I might make a little diorama for her. Um, and my thinking for what's going to be on the easel is actually I'm going to print out one of her own paintings and put it on there. So there we are. So this is in a cured state. I've uh, cleaned up all the supports um, and cured it. Uh, put it through the uh, put it through the curing machine. So what I'm going to do now is uh, prime and paint it. I'll give you some updates through this and. Uh, this will be a surprise because as far as I'm aware, she doesn't watch these videos, so uh, don't blame her, don't, she doesn't have to. Uh, so hopefully this won't spoil the surprise. If she does randomly watch this video, wouldn't that be typical? <laughs> but anyway, we shall see. I'll get this painted up and then I think, like I say, that the base is just a little bit too cramped, so I might just put that to one side. I can see myself finding a use for that anyway, so that doesn't need to go to waste. I'll make a little base, um, a little kind of scenic base for it so that she can actually be sat looking at the painting which doesn't really fit on with the base and uh, yeah see how uh, see how that turns out but I'm really pleased to have found it it's just a little serendipity I wasn't looking for it just to kind of spotted it as I was searching for something else which you'll see shortly because I've just finished printing that as well um, so yeah happy so here is the territory from mini monster madness I think that's the name of the uh, company um, what I've done is printed it and then washed it in the washing machine with uh, with um, alcohol and then put it in some nice hot water. Not so hot you can't put your hand in it but pretty hot so that rinses the alcohol off and also makes the supports as you can see literally just fall off. Now if they're not falling off like that, which they don't always, what you can do is just get yourself a knife and just run your knife very very carefully along and that will separate 
the supports from the piece without causing any damage as you can see and the these supports the reason particularly why I wanted to film this is these supports are just superb they really are so this is a keyed piece so the one thing I'm going to be finding out is how well that's going to work and I have often not found keyed pieces to work very well um, but hopefully this will it appears to be numbered I've accidentally actually picked up number one as you can see so uh, so yeah we'll find out so I'm going to clean the rest of these up uh, you can just see just how nicely these supports just are, are coming off without any pain at all um, what I'll then do is let these air dry and then cure them under UV light in the uh, in the cure machine and then I'll bring you along show you what it looks like and uh, how it looks when it's glued together and then we'll give it a bit of a we'll give it a bit of a paint and see how it comes out so uh, yeah so far very impressed with Mon Monster Mini Madness I've um, ordered I bought another couple of things off them uh, so uh, the fact that these have printed out so nicely is really good um, so yeah I'll, um, I'll get that all done and show you what it looks like when it's all dried and glued together I put this project to the side for a couple of days to have a think and work out what my next plan was going to be how I was actually going to do it and I think I've I've worked it out uh, what you can see in front of you is basically the result of my thinking so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a double layer of this black foam which is going to be a better way of, uh, of achieving the uh, the, the height that I need, so the the bank edge, as you as you as you know, is going to be like that. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut this template which I did previously, which I'm happy with the size and and the, and, and the dimensions. I'm actually going to cut the river out of it. Um, and what I've done is I've measured and found where the the base and the floor of the office of that goes so we're going to leave a bridge across here and a bridge across here so the two sides will be kept together um, and uh, so I'm going to cut along here and I've also just now done a mark so this is where the actual edge of the um, bank wants to be so I'll angle it down into there and into there because that's the the bottom one is going to be the base and the river so I will cut an angle in because that is going to be feeding in towards where the water wheel is. I am going to need to trim slightly closer, certainly at each edge, because that's where the uh, edge should be. Um, and you can see that it's going to be too wide if I continue that angle down there. Um, but basically that's what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to glue the two things together, cut this out. Uh, here so it's a bit smaller and then I can clamp that to something to keep it from getting warped and then I can continue on with doing the rest of the terrain so um, that's what I'm going to do I'm going to cut this using a, a sharp knife now the other thing I'm going to need to do when I before I glue it and I'll probably bring you back for that is sand or use a wire brush on both uh, pieces of the shiny foam because otherwise it just won't glue together so yeah I'm going to get my knife going to cut along these new lines sharper edge there cut back along these new lines and then glue the remains down to this shave this corner here and this corner here very slightly more and uh, and also at the top obviously uh, c um, uh, the same and uh, yeah I think that will uh, that'll work really well um, it will mean I can avoid the warping it means that I have a good stable flat area which I think they would have done they would have cleared this area I can maybe put a couple of stumps on the banks as well which could be quite fun um, and I think it will look really good. So yeah, I'll get my knife cut and then bring you back when I come to do the gluing. Okay, so you can see I have cut this out and uh, I have scored both sides and I have also scored this, this piece as well, just using the wire brush here. And that is going to glue on like that and it gives me a good area to clamp to keep it from being, from, from warping while I work with it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my glue and I'm going to use my Superfix Extreme and uh, yeah, I'm going to glue this down. So we'll run a bead around towards the edge. This will be additionally sealed by the application of the, t the scenery and the terrain and what have you that's going to go on top. So really all I'm doing here is holding it in place. I don't mind if there's little lifts or if I don't have glue right up to the edge. That's not the biggest issue in this. The issue is to make sure that it doesn't move. So yeah, we'll just run a bead all around the edge and in the middle here. There we are, that'll do. 
And then what we'll do is I will put this in place like this. Okay, that looks good. So press that down nice and evenly. Make sure that I've not made a mistake there and made that too wide. No, that's perfect, look. And, and so is that with my little template. So now that can be really pressed down. Squeaky desk. <laughs> and finally, I've got these weights. These are just literally joining strips, but they've got a good heft and a good weight to them and they can be positioned nicely like this to apply a really even weight across. And that will keep it nice and flat. So I'll let that go off. It does actually go off quite quickly, that glue. Uh, so it will be, it'll be ready to look at in a very short while, but I'll probably leave that overnight and then look at that again in the morning. Uh, the only other thing to add is I think I'm going to snip off this outer bit here because I don't really need it because I've got a base. If you don't have a base and you probably want that and you might want to put some blue pa paper underneath there, that could be a really, really quick way of doing this, just a little bit of blue paper um, or, or paper which you paint the water on. But for me, I'm putting on this 3D thing. So yeah, I might clip that off. Anyway, let that go off and uh, yeah, I'll bring you back for the next step when I get to it. I've got this all cured and uh, now I'm ready to start gluing them together. And I must say, I am so impressed. This is probably the best keying I've seen on any model I've ever printed. I normally have lots and lots of trouble with this. When they print out, they just don't fit. But you can see here, this is number one, and that goes on to number one, and it's almost seamless, which is just fantastic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and glue all of these uh, limbs on. Uh, you can see we've got one, two, one, two, five, six. You, we do not have a number um, nine because it would be confusing with six, which is quite smart as well. I thought. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to print all the, put these, all these on, glue them on just with super glue, uh, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. But really, they they do just slot in. There's number three. That's going to go there. They slot on very nicely. Um, you do need to glue them. They're not going to stay on without glue. Um, you won't be able to magnetize them, but they're not designed for that. I'm going to glue them. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Very pleased with that though, really pleased. So the end of the week update, it's a bit iffy. These ones are hanging on. None of them have really thrived since I've repotted them, but I'm not giving up yet. I'm still hopeful. Oh, I'm walking to something. This one's the one that's looking the least good, sadly. Mm, this one has some nice green there. The best one so far is over here. It might be that I only end up with one. <laughs> but hey, it's been fun anyway. So I keep going, I just water them again. I am watering them regularly. They obviously have a nice amount of sun and uh, I'm not, they're not being totally wet, but I am giving them enough water, I hope. Uh, this one is looking okay. There's quite a few there that look like they might come around nicely. Um, but yeah, it's just a case of watching. This is what growing things is all about, eh? I made a start on painting these through this week. As you can see, we have some lovely colors, Aston Villa colors there. So very pleased with how these are going. Um, I decided to split this into two batches just because it was quite large, quite, there's quite a lot of miniatures and um, that's probably the largest size of batch I like to paint. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I'm not far off done on this first batch. There's a, there's a few that are less close. So the actual rider. Um, well, that's not the rider, but this guy here, this, this is a, um, this is like, like a, a sorcerer of some sort, uh, is a little bit, probably the least done, but the rest are, are, are getting close. Pretty happy with how their base colors are coming on. Um, and once I've finished these, then what I'll do is I will, uh, start the next batch. Um, and hopefully I'm going to get all of these done in time for this little, uh, little challenge. So, uh, but at the very least, the theme is about, well, the theme is the sports colors, but the, the Discord and the, and the Facebook group is called Paint All The Minis and this really has encouraged me to paint all the minis, which is really cool. Uh, it's nice to paint something which has been sat on the shelf for such a long time and not really been touched. 
Um, uh, the colours I'm using, um, I left them out to show, uh, the colours I'm using is Burnt Red for the red and Sky Blue for the blue. And the rest is like silver and normal flesh tones and what have you, but those are the colours I picked for the actual Aston Villa. So yeah, uh, should get them done this coming week hopefully. This is about a week's worth of effort, just about, um, in my 22 minutes. There you go, well. Well, there we are. What a week that was, putting together those ruins at Orgord. Uh, really did take a lot of effort. It was very difficult, far more difficult than I expected. Uh, but I'm very pleased that I got them finished in time for this video. Uh, next week, I will attempt to do the texturing and painting and basing and get them completely completed. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see whether I managed to achieve that. Um, but we shall see. So, if you made it this far, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I know that my videos are quite long. That's not normally the standard of what uh, YouTube likes to share. Um, and so, uh, yeah, appreciate every single view that you give me. It really, really is cool. Do let me know in the comments below what you think. I do reply to every single one and uh, they do really encourage me. Now, I'll wrap up by saying thoughts go to everyone directly or indirectly impacted by the horrors in Ukraine right now. Really do send my uh, heart out to you all and... As always, please stay healthy, stay safe and stay well.